All right, today we're going to talk about the bisectors of triangles. We're going to look at two different kinds. The objectives that you need to write down is I will learn to prove and apply properties of perpendicular bisectors of a triangle, and I will learn to prove and apply properties of angle bisectors of a triangle. Key vocabulary words that you need are concurrent, point of concurrency, circumcenter of a triangle, circumscribed, and center of a triangle, and inscribed. All right, since a triangle has three sides, it's going to have three perpendicular bisectors. So when you construct all three of those perpendicular bisectors, something unique happens. Right. Well, when three or more lines intersect at one point, the lines are said to be concurrent. The point of concurrency is the point where they intersect. The three perpendicular bisectors of a triangle are concurrent. So we call that point of concurrency the circumcenter of the triangle. So if you look down here, you see a picture, and these red lines are, the red segments are the perpendicular bisectors. So they all meet at this point P. Point P would be the circumcenter of this triangle, and what happens is that the distance from that point of concurrency, or that circumcenter, that point P, the distance from P to B equals the distance from P to A and the distance from P to C. All right, so again, just to kind of recap, the perpendicular bisectors, they intersect at the circumcenter. And the distance from the circumcenter to each vertex is equal. Okay, and also remember that the perpendicular bisector of a side of a triangle does not always pass through the opposite vertex. All right, so here's some examples. When you have an acute triangle, it is inside the triangle. Obtuse would be outside the triangle. And on a right triangle, the circumcenter is actually on the hypotenuse. All right. Also, another vocabulary word, the circumcenter of triangle ABC is the center of its circumscribed circle. A circle that contains all the vertices of a polygon is said to be um, circumscribed about the polygon. So if you notice on um, triangle ABC each vertice is on the edge of the circle. Okay, so let's look at our first example. We're told that segment DG, segment EG, and segment FG are the perpendicular bisectors of triangle ABC and they want us to find the distance from G to C. Okay. So since we have all three perpendicular bisectors, G is the circumcenter of the triangle, which means that G is equidistant from A, B, and C. And by the circumcenter theorem, that would mean that GC is equal to CB. And since GB is 13.4, that means GC has to be 13.4. All right, next example, um, using the diagram, we want to find the distance from G to M. And we're told that segment MZ is a perpendicular bisector of triangle GHJ. Okay, again, by that circumcenter theorem, that's going to mean that GM is equal to MJ. So if MJ is 14.5, GM, the distance from G to M, is 14.5 units. Okay, next example, use the diagram, find the distance from G to K, and in this case, segment KZ is a perpendicular bisector of triangle GHJ. Circumcenter theorem then would tell us that the distance from G to K is equal to the distance from K to H. So therefore, GK is 18.6 units. Right, next example, use the diagram. We're going to find the distance from J to Z. Z is the circumcenter, which means that the distance from J to Z is equal to the distance from G to Z. Okay, so we're going to substitute 19.9 for GZ, which means JZ, the distance from J to Z, is also 19.9 units. All right, next set of examples, we're going to actually find the circumcenter of a triangle. 
on a coordinate plane. So this, in this instance, they give us a triangle HJK, and they give us the vertices. So first thing to do is to graph the triangle, like so. Okay, then we're going to find equations for the two perpendicular bisectors. Since the two sides of the triangle lie on the, on the x and y axis, we're going to use the graph to find the perpendicular bisector of these two sides. The perpendicular bisector of segment HJ is a horizontal line at x equals 5, excuse me, a vertical line at x equals 5, and the perpendicular bisector of segment HK is a horizontal line at y equals 3, like so. Right, so if I take this and I go the distance from 1 to 3, I look at the midpoint, excuse me, 1 from 1 to 6, and I look at the midpoint, I'm going to get a line that goes this direction. Right, and that would be my y equals 3 line. If I look at the midpoint of this line down here, um, 1 to 10, or 0 to 10, half of that would be 5. So in this case, I'm going to draw a vertical line that would go this direction. Okay, so that would be my two lines. Right. So that intersection point would be at 5, 3. Okay, we're going to look at another example. Again, um, we're going to do this on the coordinate plane. So the first step is to graph the triangle. Right. Again, for this in this particular case, um, two of the sides of the triangle are on the x and y axis. Here, so if I look at GO, that's going to give me a horizontal line at 4.5, or negative 4.5, which would be about right here. And then if I look at OH, that's going to be 1 through H, so that's going to be a vertical line that goes down here at X equals 4. So let's put these graphs on here for you, and you can see where they would cross at 4 and negative 4.5. Right, now we're going to talk about the angle bisectors. All right, and the triangle has three angles, so it's going to have three angle bisectors. The angle bisectors of a triangle are also concurrent. The point of concurrency for these is going to be called the end center of the triangle. So looking at this triangle down here, um, I took each angle and we bisected them. And where those angle bisectors meet, that's the end center. And what happens with the end center is the distance from P to each side of the triangle is equal. So the distance from P to X is equal to the distance from P to Y, which is equal to the distance from P to Z. Okay, so we'll look at some examples so you can kind of get a better understanding of this theorem. Um, before we do that, we need to remember that the distance between a point and a line is the length of the perpendicular segment. That's why on this theorem you saw these 90 degree angles because that would represent the shortest distance from P to each side of the triangle. All right. Uh, something that's different about the circumcenter is that it's always going to be inside the triangle regardless of what type of triangle it is. Right. And the end center is the center of the triangle's inscribed circle. A circle inscribed in a polygon intersects each line that contains the side of the polygon at exactly one point. Okay, so circumscribed means that the circle is on the goes around the outside of the, the polygon. Inscribed means it's going to be inside the polygon, and it only touches once per side. 
All right, so let's look at this example. Segment MP and segment LP are angle bisectors of triangle LMN. We want to find the distance from P to segment MN. So using our theorem, P is the end center of the triangle. And the distance from P to LM is 5, which means that the distance from P to segment MN is also going to be 5. Right, next example, MP, segment MP and segment LP are angle bisectors of triangle LMN. We want to find the measure of triangle PMN. Right, since segment PL is bisector of angle MLN, the measure of angle MLN is twice the measure of angle PLN, which is marked to be 50 degrees. So we're going to do 2 times 50, which gives us 100. Right. Now, uh, we want this angle over here, so we're going to use the, the fact that the angles inside a triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. And then we're going to substitute the values that we have. We know that angle M and L is 20 degrees, and we just found out that the measure of angle MLN is 100. So we're going to substitute uh, 100 plus 20 is 120, so we subtract 120 from both sides and we get 60 degrees. And then we also know that segment PM is the bisector of triangle LMN, and the measure of angle PMN is half the measure of angle LMN. So if LMN is 60, half of that gives us 30. Right. I'm going to give you a minute to try this one, see if you can solve it on your own. Pause the video, try to work it out, and then come back and check your answer. All right. Hopefully you got that the distance is 19.2 units. If not, I went ahead and gave you an explanation as to how we get 19.2. Right. We have one more example. Segment QX and segment RX are angle bisectors of triangle PQR, and we are trying to find the measure of angle PQX. So again, I'm going to pause the video so you can try this on your own, and then check your answer. So pause the video, try it on your own. All right, here is my answer and the work for it. I got that the measure of angle PQX is 52 degrees. Hopefully you got the same thing. And this concludes our notes over bisectors of triangles.